ever considered how much money you could save by preserving your own food? Imagine a world where your favorite fruits and vegetables are available all year round, irrespective of the season. Picture the satisfaction of opening a jar of summer sunshine in the dead of winter, the taste of home-preserved tomatoes in your chili, or stew. That's the power of food preservation. In an era where food prices are skyrocketing and supply chains are more unpredictable than ever, learning to preserve food at home has never been more important. It's not just a hobby, it's a survival skill. It's a way to stretch your grocery budget, ensure a consistent food supply, and reduce waste. Think about the last time you had to throw away a bag of wilted spinach or a pot of spoiled soup. It's not just about the money, it's about the wasted resources, the labor that went into producing that food, and the energy it took to transport it to your local store. Preserving food allows us to capture the freshness and nutrition of our food at its peak. It's a way of respecting the effort that went into producing it, of honoring the earth that grew it. It's a method as old as human civilization, a testament to our ancestors' ingenuity and their understanding of nature's cycles. But food preservation isn't just about looking to the past. It's about preparing for the future. It's about taking control of our food supply, becoming more self-reliant and ensuring we're ready for whatever comes our way. It's about turning a pile of ripe peaches into jars of peach jam, a box of tomatoes into cans of tomato sauce, a bumper crop of cucumbers into crunchy pickles. So whether you're interested in canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, or all of the above, preserving food at home is a journey worth embarking on. It's a skill that pays dividends in the form of delicious, home-preserved food, money saved, and a smaller carbon footprint. Remember, food preservation isn't just about saving money, it's about securing your food supply and reducing waste. As we delve deeper into this topic, you'll discover that the benefits of food preservation reach far beyond your kitchen and your wallet. They ripple out into your community and your world. Now that you understand why food preservation is crucial, let's dive into the key methods. First up is canning. This technique involves sealing food in containers and then heating them to kill or weaken any microorganisms that can cause spoilage. Canning is a fantastic way to preserve a wide variety of foods, from fruits and vegetables to meats and seafood. It's a bit of a time investment, but the reward is shelf-stable food that can last for years. Next, we have freezing. This is perhaps the simplest method of food preservation. By storing food at low temperatures, you slow down the activity of enzymes and microorganisms, effectively hitting the pause button on spoilage. While freezing can affect the texture of some foods, it's a highly convenient way to preserve many items, especially fruits and vegetables. Then we have dehydrating. This method removes water from food, inhibiting the growth of bacteria, yeasts, and molds. Dehydration is excellent for preserving fruits, vegetables, and herbs, and it can even be used to make jerky. The resulting food is lightweight and compact, making it ideal for camping or emergency food supplies. Last but certainly not least, we have fermenting. This ancient technique uses the action of bacteria, yeasts, or other microorganisms to convert sugars in the food into other compounds, preserving the food and often enhancing its flavor and nutritional value. Fermentation can be used to make a wide array of foods, including yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, and sourdough bread. Each preservation technique has its own benefits and uses. Canning offers long-term storage, while freezing provides convenience. Dehydration is great for portable food, and fermentation can enhance flavor and nutrition. The key is to find the method that suits your needs and lifestyle best. And remember, food preservation isn't just about survival. It's also about enjoying the bounty of different seasons all year round, reducing waste, and creating delicious homemade foods that you can be proud of. So, let's get preserving. Preserving food requires some essential tools. Let's go through them. First off, for canning, you'll need a few basic items. Canning jars, lids, and bands are a must, of course. But also consider investing in a jar lifter, a canning funnel, and a bubble remover for those pesky air pockets. A pressure canner is a vital piece of equipment for canning low-acid foods like meat or vegetables. For high-acid foods like fruits and pickles, a simple boiling water canner will do the trick. Next up is freezing. This is probably the easiest method to get started with, as all you really need is a freezer, although a deep freezer can provide more storage space. You'll also need freezer-safe containers or bags to store your food. Vacuum sealers are great if you plan to freeze food for extended periods, as they can help prevent freezer burn. For dehydrating, a good quality dehydrator is key. 
While you can use an oven for some foods, a dehydrator gives you more control over temperature and timing, making it easier to get consistent results. You might also want to invest in a mandolin slicer for even thin cuts of fruits and vegetables. Last but not least, fermenting. This ancient method of preservation requires very little in terms of equipment. A large glass or ceramic jar for fermenting, a smaller jar or weight to keep food submerged, and a cloth or lid to cover it. If you get serious about fermenting, you might want to look into airlock lids, which allow gases to escape during fermentation without letting air in. When choosing tools for food preservation, consider your needs and budget. Start with the basics and add more specialized tools as you get more experienced and comfortable with each method. Remember, the goal is to make preserving food at home a practical and enjoyable process, not an overwhelming one. With the right tools at your disposal, you're well on your way to mastering food preservation. You don't have to be a farmer to preserve food. Let's see how you can benefit from seasonal sales. Seasonal sales are like gold mines for those interested in food preservation. When fruits and vegetables are in season, they're not only at their freshest, but also often at their most affordable. This is the perfect time to stock up and preserve these goodies so you can enjoy them long after their season is passed. Imagine biting into a juicy peach in the middle of winter, a peach that you canned yourself during the summer. Or how about savoring homemade tomato sauce in spring, made from tomatoes you bought in bulk and preserved at the height of summer. With food preservation, this isn't just possible, it's easy, affordable, and incredibly satisfying. But it's not just about fruits and vegetables. Seasonal sales also apply to meats, fish, and poultry. When these items are on sale, consider buying in bulk, then preserving them through freezing, canning, or even smoking. This way, you can have high-quality protein sources available year-round without breaking the bank. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know when items are in season? Well, most grocery stores have flyers or online newsletters that highlight weekly sales and seasonal items. Familiarize yourself with these resources and plan your shopping trips accordingly. And don't forget about farmer's markets. These are excellent places to find fresh, locally grown produce, often at surprisingly affordable prices. Plus, you're supporting local farmers, a win-win situation. Another tip is to get friendly with your local butcher or fishmonger. They can give you a heads up when certain items will be on sale or when they'll have a surplus. This way you can plan your preservation activities ahead of time. Remember, the key to making the most of seasonal sales is planning and preparation. Know what's in season, where to get it, and how you're going to preserve it. With a little forethought and effort, you can enjoy a diverse, delicious, and cost-effective food supply all year round. Seasonal sales are a great opportunity to stock up and preserve a variety of foods at a lower cost. New to food preservation, here are some tips to get you started. First off, start small. It's easy to get overwhelmed with the idea of preserving a whole season's worth of produce. Instead, begin with a single batch of something simple like homemade strawberry jam or pickled cucumbers. This will allow you to get the hang of the process without feeling too overwhelmed. Next, practice makes perfect. Don't be disheartened if your first few attempts aren't perfect. The more you preserve, the better you'll get. And remember, even if it doesn't look perfect, it might still be perfectly edible. So don't be too quick to throw away your efforts. Also, cleanliness is key. Any bacteria present during the preservation process can spoil your food, making it unsafe to eat. So ensure that your hands, tools, and workspace are clean before you start. And remember to always process your jars correctly to ensure a good seal and prevent spoilage. Another tip is to always use high-quality fresh ingredients. The quality of your preserved food will only be as good as the ingredients you start with. So, always choose the freshest, highest-quality produce you can find. If you wouldn't eat it fresh, don't preserve it. It's also important to follow recipes exactly, especially when you're just starting out. This is particularly true for canning, where the safety of your preserved food depends on the acidity levels. Tweaking recipes can upset these levels and make your food unsafe to eat. Lastly, don't be afraid to experiment. Once you've got the basics down, feel free to try out different flavor combinations and preservation methods. You might discover a new favorite. Remember, food preservation is an art as much as it is a science. It's about more than just extending the shelf life of your food. It's about capturing the essence of the seasons, reducing waste, and creating something truly unique and delicious. With these tips, you're ready to start your food preservation journey. Food preservation isn't just about saving money, it's also about reducing waste. 
Think about those times when you've had to throw out food because it's spoiled before you could consume it. It's not just a waste of money, but it's also a waste of resources. And that's where food preservation comes in. Let's start by looking at leftovers. These can be a gold mine for preservation. Got some leftover vegetables from last night's dinner? Why not pickle them? They'll last longer and add a tangy bite to your future meals. Have leftover fruit that's about to go bad? Try making a jam or a jelly. This way your fruit lives on in a sweet and delicious form. Next, let's talk about those bulk buys and seasonal sales. Sometimes it's hard to resist the allure of a great deal on fresh produce. But what happens when you can't consume everything before it spoils? Well, that's where food preservation shines. Freeze, can, dehydrate, or ferment your surplus. You'll have a ready supply of food for the leaner months and reduce your waste in the process. And it's not just about the food, either. By preserving your own food, you're reducing the need for commercially preserved goods. This means less packaging, less transportation, and ultimately less carbon footprint. It's a small step, but if we all do our part, it can add up to a big difference. Lastly, let's not forget about those scraps. Vegetable peels, fruit cores, and bones can all be used to make stocks and broths. These nutritious and flavorful bases can then be canned or frozen for future use, reducing waste and maximizing your food's potential. By preserving your food, you're not just saving money and securing your food supply. You're also contributing to a more sustainable world.